Some more on this uh, sell-off that we saw today on Wall Street. Investors certainly, I think it's fair to say, after listening to both Phil and Lori, searching uh, for safety. So we bring in our panel of Scott Martin from Kingsview Asset Management, a Fox News contributor, and John Petridis from Point View uh, Wealth Management. Uh, let me go to you, Scott, on this idea um, that both of them just talked about. It seems to be hanging over the market, the vote in the U.K., potentially uh, the U.K. leaving the EU. Why is that such a big deal for us here? What's the potential impact in your view of it? I think it just signifies more the destabilizing effect that a Brexit would have on, say, the overall idea of the European Union. I, I get your point, though. I think it is kind of funny that here we are a day before the Fed decision and about a week before the Britain vote, and now the market's freaking out. Yeah. I mean, this kind of stuff to me was evident weeks ago, and the market was whistling by the graveyard. Just so goes is there to show something you else going on here? I don't think so. I just think as an investor, you've got to stay nimble and you've got to stay with trades you have confidence in, which is bonds. I still like long bonds here. I still think rates are going down. And you can call me gold member. I love gold. I think gold is the place <laughs> to be you. if you want to hedge both bonds and stocks. It would be the first thing I'd call you, Scott, but it certainly would be on the list. Now, uh, John, let me ask you a little bit about what Scott brought up, which is lower interest rates, because that's another one of the big headlines today, right, is that we wake up and see the German bond yields, their benchmark bond yields gone negative. So what does that tell you um, about any kind of fear that's out there worldwide uh, related to the UK vote that we're waiting for? Well, the, the, yeah, well, that's right. I mean, investors in the UK and, and in Europe are, are, are fleeing to safety in the German Bund, which is driving negative rates. Uh, and clearly the U.S. looks, uh, the U.S. 10-year looks like the best place on the worst block right now, um, despite the fact of where uh, the Janet Yellen and the Fed may or may not act on. All right, despite weak job growth, consumer spending remains strong. Retail sales beating expectations in May. Meanwhile, Macy's is testing a new concept store, revamping one location in Ohio to include, quote, lifestyle sections, and attempting to get shoppers to pay full price. Scott Martin, they already don't want to go into a store. I mean, if you looked at retail sales, it was all about online. Now you want them to pay full price? Yeah, and come in the store. I mean, that seems like kind of the double whammy. I mean, if you want to keep customers away, ask them to come into the store and ask them to pay full price. So I, I don't know what Macy's is thinking here, but they're on to something, which is you, you look at shopper surveys, you look at things that people like when they go into a store. It is that shopping experience. So, Melissa, this just might work as a latch-ditch effort on a company that is heading downward. I wonder if I can tempt John Petridis with a little Lululemon educators. Oh, no. um, mm. There's a, a juice bar, athletic clothing. You look like a juice bar kind of guy, no? Huh. Oh, I wish I was a juice car bar type of guy, but it's not my thing. But clearly a destination is where uh, what the retailers are trying to do because they understand the e-commerce is eating their lunch, no pun intended. I mean, this is, nice. something, that well Ron jo this is something that Ron Johnson touched on when he took over uh, JCPenney uh, three years ago, although it was a failed attempt, he tried to recreate the Genius Bar at Apple and create a jeans bar at JCPenney to get people to the store because he knew that online shopping was going to take away the foot traffic. And yeah. give credit to Macy's. You know, Macy's was ahead of their competition. They're one of the largest uh, apparel uh, online uh, retail apparel uh, uh, stores in the country, and now they're trying to re-innovate to, uh, to, to keep uh, some momentum to the stores. Well, well I want to play off that little pun on uh, eating at lunch <laughs> because we do have a Chipotle uh, story today. The stock, there it is, at a uh, three-year low earlier in the day today, although it bounced back. There's an analyst that came out and warned that uh, Chipotle could have customers that are lost for good. In other words, never coming back because of the E. coli uh, crisis. Uh, Gold member, I was Scott. Uh, do, is that something <laughs> where you have you been back? Be honest. Have you been back to Chipotle? I've been back, just full disclosure, twice since no, the crisis. Not have me. you? Um, were you a Chipotle guy, number one, and have you been back since? See, that's the thing. I, I really never was. Now, oh. I, I've, I've been back since the scare. So, yeah, I mean, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. But I will tell you, uh, to say that they've lost their customers completely seems kind of wrong to me because customers kind of always come back well, unless you really blow it. Now, I, I think Chipotle's problem, though, is they haven't really changed the menu in years. There's no innovative food concepts there. And I think that's really the thing when you're looking at this, this like, hip, fast food that a lot of these restaurants need to do to keep getting the customers in the door. Well, here's the thing, John. This place called Civic, uh, Civic Science, they did this survey, right, where they asked people um, you know, whether or not they like Chipotle. And the people who don't like it increased to 24% the second quarter of this year from 18% in the fourth quarter of last year. And I think things like that are leading this analyst to say, 
say that this may have a, not only a long lasting but a permanent effect, this crisis, that it's so deep in people's minds that they can't get it out of their minds. What's well, your take? Well, I think every good consumer brand goes through hardship at some point in time. I look at the early 80s when Johnson & Johnson had to recall Tylenol because right. it killed seven people. And here we are, Johnson & Johnson, 30 years, 40 years later. But um, think about uh, the problem with Chipotle really is the stock price, not necessarily the business. I mean, the stock is still trading at 34 times earnings and expected to grow earnings 40% from 2018 over 2017. And from a business standpoint, hey, if the four of us wanted to go out and open up a burrito joint, we can do that, right? There's a tremendous substitution effect. You don't have to eat at Chipotle for breakfast or for lunch or dinner. I don't think Melissa's interested in that. Uh, no. But thank you very much, uh, such as it is, <laughs> Scott and John. <laughs>